It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, hockey fans, Erica L. Ayala, your host of Locked On Kraken here, and I just learned Discover credit cards do something pretty awesome. At the end of the first year, they automatically double all the cash back you've earned. That's right. Everything you earned doubled. All the cash back from buying every single Seattle Kraken home game puck doubled. All the cash back from buying out the Beast Mode line doubled. And the best part, you don't have to do anything ridiculous to get it. Nope, Discover does it automatically. See terms and check it out for yourself at discover.com backslash match. What is going on, everybody? And thank you for joining us for the Friday episode of the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. There's a lot to get to on today's episode, including Jesper Brack getting paid, a lot of off-ice moves that Steele and I want to break down all across the league. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get right to it. Your Locked On Fantasy Hockey, your daily podcast on fantasy hockey. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Lots of news breaking across the NHL right now. Happy Friday, everybody, and welcome back inside the lab to the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast. Joined, as always, by my esteemed co-host, Mr. Steel Roden. It's your boy, Big Flip Livingstone, and thank you for making us your first listen every single day, even throughout the offseason. Steel and I will be here to break down all of the fantasy hockey news that you need to dominate your draft upcoming and today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty bucks off your first purchase. And like I said, a little bit off the top, I was a little struggling a bit. Steel Jesper Bratt getting paid. We knew the Devils were going to make some moves. Let's talk about that eight-year deal, sixty-three million dollars. But maybe a little bit more interestingly, we're going to look off ice today. Take a look into some of these off ice moves. The Ottawa Senators finally getting a new ownership group. This is going to be huge, I think, Steel, for on-ice importance. So let's break that down. to Brinkat already right at the top of the news bubble. Pens, Leafs, intertwined with their front <laughs> office moves, perhaps, Steel. Dubas and Spezza in Pittsburgh. Trey Living, Doan in Toronto now. You and I want to talk about all of this. So let's get right to it, though. Jesper Bratt, eight-year deal, $63 million dollars. We've had our eyes on the Devils now all season long. Yeah, this is a signing that a lot of people, especially Devil fans, have been waiting for, just getting pen to paper, which uh, it took a while for Yes for Rat to do, but finally has done so. Eight years, $63 million deal, $7.875 million per year. Yes. It might be a little bit of an overpayment in my, in my mm. opinion right there. Maybe would have mm-hmm. been a little nicer uh, from the organization standpoint to get him down closer to seven and a half million, maybe even seven point two five million. But nonetheless, yeah. this, is, this is a guy who's twenty four years old and has put back uh, put up uh, point mm-hmm. productions in back to back seasons of seventy three points, thirty two goals this last year, first time scoring thirty plus goals in a season as well. So. Uh, he definitely deserves the contract and the length of the contract. Again, maybe a little bit. I'm talking microscopic payment, uh, overpayment in this sense of, <laughs> uh, of of contract wise. But he definitely deserves the contract length. Okay. Eight years with you. the Devils. He's with young guys. He's surrounded by young guys. Obviously, Jack Hughes, Nico Keisher, and a few other mm. guys there mm. that I have that we've talked about a lot. Dawson Mercer being one of them. Uh, but fantasy yeah. wise, he's become really. He's be has really become a great fantasy player to own if you can get him in the right round. Uh, again, mm-hmm. 273 uh, points, over 200 shots. The other yep. peripheral stats, blocks and hits, those aren't really a part of his game. The penalty minutes aren't no. a part of his game either, so he's not a nope. great banger league beauty. But he's, he nope. finished top 100 in fantasy points this past season, which was around Can't deny it. season rank. So he's been mm-hmm. phenomenal, and I expect him to continue this success as well. Again, playing with Jack Hughes and Nico Keisher and all those other young guys. So – this yeah. wasn't a fluke from Jesper Bratt. Again, put up back-to-back 73 points and played in over 70-plus games the past two seasons as well. So he's a phenomenal fantasy ad. 
only 24 years old as well, Steele. So, like, I need to see even more from Jesper Brad in terms of the sample yeah. size because the more I see, the more I like offensively, of course. You mentioned other peripheral categories, not his game. That's not why you draft this guy, but you do draft him to make sure that you have some offensive punch, and he's definitely been bringing that. Devils-wise, though, in terms of moves, Cap Friendly, shout out to our friends at Cap Friendly, $26 million left steal in projected cap space, even after the Brat deal. So there is some money to go around here, but Timo Meyer headlines the prize, you know, off-season targets. They're going to have to get yeah. that money. Michael McLeod, Sharon Govich, Boakvist, Mackenzie Blackwood is probably going to save them some money by being going elsewhere. But at the end of it all, Steele, I think, what excites me the most about this news, and uh, this is not a bold take, you're going to want a piece of the New Jersey Devils offensive attack, yeah. whether you're in a dynasty keeper format or you're going year to year, but maybe perhaps steal, especially in keeper dynasty, because we know this young core isn't going anywhere. And we talked about the key staying healthy. And now if this goaltending can figure it out, we know the Devils are going to be right back in the mix in that Metro division. And after a season of Jack Hughes putting up 99 points, a franchise record, I think you have to look at this team and all mm -hmm. of the uh, offensive weapons they have up front, especially That's if they're fair. able to re-sign Timo Meyer. We've talked about that potential danger duo of Meyer. He's and likely Hughes. up next, I think. He is, I think Timo Meyer and Eric Holler are the next two guys in line. We've, you know, mm -hmm. Eric Holler has made it clear that he Good wants depth, to re-sign and be with this team. So I think Timo Meyer and Eric Holler are the next two targets mm -hmm. on the devil's hit list right now. I think also Igor Sharon Govich is there yeah. as well. I think he had they a want him back season. Too. They want him back. They've got a lot of young guys on this team. So again, especially if the, if the devil's organization and Tom Fitzgerald, they can re-sign Timo Meyer at a mm -hmm. really good price or it doesn't matter whether it, if he does re-sign with the devils, you've got to look at this team, Jack Hughes, Nico Heischer, Timo Meyer, Dougie Hamilton, especially on the, on the back end for defensemen. Yeah. Fantasy wise, this is going to be a team that is scoring a lot of goals. I expect them to be in the top yes. seven for goals for the next season mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Again, depends on if they're able to re-sign a lot of those guys, but I think they will be able to. And let's not forget about some of those young guns that we were talking about, most notably Luke Hughes banging. Honestly, still, I'm excited to see what some of those prospects do with the Devils. They're the kind of players that end of your draft – the rest of your uh, GMs in your league are sleeping. You might be able to get some of these young devil's guns at a really, really good round. But we'll talk a little bit more about some of this off-ice news. Around the NHL, the Sens sale is huge. To bring cat rumors abound. They're taking him to arbitration steal. What does this mean for his value? Seems like he's on his way out. We also want to talk a little bit about the Pens and Leafs. Dubis now in Pittsburgh, True Living now in Toronto. What does it mean for the on ice product? Steel, what about the product about bird dogs? We know we've been loving these shorts on the course, at the gym, anywhere really. They're fire, stretchy khaki shorts from bird dogs designed to fit slimmer through the thigh, giving the leg that sculpted look. The legs are looking fire these days, Steel. The shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way better. They fit better than shorts, and they're made of stiff, non-restricting cotton. Bird dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit cotton. You just want to be rocking these bird dog steel. I know you got a couple of extra pairs on order. I'm rocking them on the course. I'm rocking them at the gym. They're also just so comfortable. And you make sure you head over to bird dogs. They got a banging deal right now. Birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumber with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on NHL for a free Yeti style tumbler. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. The NHL playoffs are here, and this one goes out to the goalies, the last line of defense, the ones who can save a game all by themselves. You know who else makes game changing saves? Discover. They have savings accounts that earn five times the national savings average in interest. Could you imagine a goalie with five times the saves? instant hall of famer so start making some game-changing saves for yourself and check out the savings account at discover discover bank member fdic see terms and learn more at discover.com slash savings 
And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. We are a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where you can find your favorite team from all four major sports leagues, including the NCAA, your team every single day. And thank you so much. Please make sure you hit the subscribe, hit the follow button, flip it. I appreciate all the love and support you show us every single day. And we hope that we are giving you some support as well for your fantasy hockey teams next season. And hopefully you won yours this past year as well. Uh, And a team that's in the winning column right now over the last two days are the Ottawa Senators. Finally, new ownership. Michael and Lauer is set to become the new owner of the Ottawa Senators. Total number, though. $950 $950 million for the Ottawa mm. Senators. And again, you you said this before we jumped on here. Eugene Melnick bought this club back in 2003 for what? $92 million? What I believe a- it was $95 million, yes. Yeah, so incredible, incredible what, uh, mm-hmm. you know, the Ottawa Senators land new ownership, the Melnick daughters. They needed the entire it. Process, they needed it. They yeah. get it done. After a very, very, very long process, it yes. seems like it's been going on for what the last three months that oh, names longer. started popping out in, yeah. in the process and throwing oh, in true. offers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. been it's been an incredible process, but nonetheless, Michael Al- and Lauer is set to become the new owner of the Ottawa Senators. Hey, it, it was almost Snoop Dogg. It was almost the weekend. Ryan Reynolds almost had it. You know, I, look. At the end of the day, this is actually a really – this is big news for hockey in Canada. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, there would have been uh, an ownership group ready to scoop this team up and move it south of the border steel. Because at the end of the day, when you buy something, it's yours. So they can make all the promises they want. This is a group that's obviously committed to the Ottawa area, this franchise, and keeping it in Ottawa – 10% retained by the Melnick. Yep. I think it's his daughters retained yeah, the daughters. 10%. Um, at the end of the day, though, it's just very interesting. Like, huge win for Ottawa. Huge yeah. win for hockey in Canada. Like, it's really important. It's not to be overlooked. Um, $950 million in principle. Also, shout out to Bruce Gary Oak, an absolute stud of a journalist covering <laughs> all of this news. I love Brucey e. B. But... What does this mean, Steele, for now the on-ice product? Because I think a lot of question marks have been raised over what are their ability to invest in contracts, to be aggressive on the open market. And now I think, wait, Pierre Dorian, we already liked the moves he was doing. Now you can't help but feel he's going to have a few more bullets in the chamber to make some moves. And I think he's going to do just that. Starting with, obviously, what do you do with the Brinkat? It sounds like he wants out, though. Yeah, it does sound like he wants out. And, and for Michael Anlauer and just the entire process and everything, I think it's a great move for the Ottawa Senators and great for the entire city and their fan yes. base. Um, no this is a, this is a hockey guy. Again, you mentioned it. He had part ownership of the Montreal Canadiens. He has to obviously sell those shares after mm-hmm. becoming the yep. majority owner of the Ottawa Senators. But this has been a hockey guy. He grew up in Montreal. He ended up growing up. He ended up uh, making a lot of money for himself. And He actually owned the Hamilton Bulldogs in the OHL at one point before they moved. So this has been a hockey guy. He knows the hockey business Mm -hmm. and he knows what it's like to own a team. Again, not the majority of an NHL team, but now he does with the Ottawa Senators. So I think it's great for the Ottawa fan base, great Mm -hmm. for local businesses in Ottawa. And I think it's just great for the entire team and organization of the Ottawa Senators to land this guy. Yeah. For for the, uh, for the on ice and on roster positions, you, like you said, Alex to bring it, Mm. I don't know why Alex Debrinkit wouldn't want to re-sign, especially when you look Me at too. his team and the guys that they Me have. Too. Tim Stutzla, Brady Kachuk, Claude Giroux, Drake mm. Batherson, Josh Norris, Thomas Shabbat. This team is built with many, many superstar so, talents right now. Do you want me to throw out a little bit of a crazy line of uh, thought here? This is what I, you know, I got a little deep into this today because I'm with you, Steele. He also formed some great chemistry with Claude Giroux. And you know, especially after this uh, investment in a new ownership group, that I really do think Pierre Dorian is going to have the assets to go out there. Hey, cap is cap. But to go out there and try and get a good goaltender, to maybe try and get a peripheral piece on the blue line, this team, in my opinion, is right there. And look, this is where I have to look at it. 
to bring cat Michigan boy, some opportunities with Detroit. There's been rumors around that he wants to go to a American franchise. I'm not saying Detroit's where he's going. Cause I think we've also heard real rumors about Vegas, Dallas, and some yeah. big market teams. But when you hear that, so you can't help but feel that he's on his way out. And now he's headed to arbitration as well. Well, I think that's the only reason, the only reason that I can come up with possibly that he doesn't want to resign is because he doesn't want to sign long-term and live in Canada for that many years. That's the only reason. Which I is the rumor going which, around, I which believe. Yeah. Is, which is a valid, which is a valid decision and thought process for many players out there. I'm not trying to I knock them down yeah. for that. I no. get it, but for that to be the only reason, from what I've read, he was very happy and ecstatic to play with Josh Norris and Claude Giroux. Obviously, he wasn't able to play with Josh Norris this yeah. past year uh, with obviously the uh, shoulder injuries that he suffered throughout the season. Mm-hmm. But when you, again you look at the team and where this Ottawa Senators team is headed. I would want to be with this team. I would want to ride with this yeah. team on the way up. And maybe it just has to do with the ownership being up in the air. And now maybe things will change. Who knows? We're not close to the team. I was shouting out Bruce E.G. He is close to the team. And they still don't really know what's going on with the Brinkett. So yeah. it's just because how good he has been. There's not many multiple 40 goal scorers out there floating around. He has shown that he can be an elite goal scorer. He's only 25 as well, Steele. So yeah. this is why we're talking about it. It's not a peripheral piece. Debrinkat is a game-changing piece. And, and I think you make a very valid comment there with the Detroit Red Wings. He's from Michigan. Thank it's you. close to home. Yeah. And if Detroit Red Wings are smart, and we all know that Steve Eiserman is a very smart general manager and hockey sense mm-hmm. player, as a hockey sense mm-hmm. guy, Mm-hmm. Could you imagine Alex Dabrinkit and D- Dylan Larkin on the same line together? That just gets Alex Dabrinkit back up to 40 goals a season, in my opinion. I think those two would fit perfectly together with all the speed and talent they have up front. Lots of good young pieces coming out of Detroit still. We've talked about this. I know I've been off predicting a come up for Detroit. Now, maybe the <laughs> past two seasons, Billy Huso's shown for real. They also still have Nadelkovic. Lots of interesting pieces, Marit Sider and otherwise. Anyway, at the end of it all, I think Debrinkat, where he goes, is going to clearly affect his fantasy value. But Senators, these off-ice moves, this is going to be a huge influx, I think, into what Pierre Dorian is going to be able to do. And actually, now that I'm speaking this out loud, maybe we have our boys on from Locked On Sens to break this down a little bit next week, Steel. But why don't you take us to break? Let's have a chit-chat about the Penguins adding Dubas and Spezza. Dubas said he didn't want to go anywhere else. That was obviously BS. Leafs go a different route. You had a bit of a take with the Don't Add. Let's get there. I'm excited to talk about it because, Steele, we're going to have to get a little creative here, pal. It's a long, long time till October, pal. So let's get it in. We've got a lot of things in the chamber for this offseason content-wise. A lot of fantasy draft and top 10s, though, but we love making those top 10 lists. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting event shouldn't be stressful. For example, this weekend, I wanted to go watch a BC Lions game, so I just hopped on the Game Time app and easily purchased my tickets with no hassle whatsoever. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way to purchase your tickets for any event you're looking for, sports, music, comedy, even theater tickets, anything that's near you, you can get on the Game Time app. And even if you're looking for those spontaneous adventures, last minute deals, Game Time has flash deals on last minute tickets right up to start time. They're easy to find and let you even preview the seat images before your purchase. It's the fastest growing ticketing app in the country for a reason. And the tickets are sent directly to your phone so you don't have to dig through your email and just end up not finding them because we all know that's a hassle. So snag your tickets without the stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What's up, everybody? David Harrison here of the Locked On Commanders podcast. When life gets crazy. And honestly, when doesn't it? Walmart helps you keep it all together. Now with a little extra help from Instacart. If you need your groceries now-ish, 
but your options for going to Walmart are later-ish or never-ish, you can get everything you need delivered through Instacart right to your door in as fast as an hour. Skip the shop and savor more of your crazy busy life with Walmart and Instacart. Visit instacart.com to get free delivery on your first three orders. Offer valid for a limited time. Minimum order $10. Additional terms apply. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Don't forget, we are free and available on your favorite podcast platform, including YouTube. So hammer that subscribe. Hammer the follow Mm -hmm. button. We appreciate Mm -hmm. all the love and support. You show us every single day, and we hope we're doing that, reciprocating that love back towards you this offseason with all the hot content that Flip and I have coming up. Speaking of which, this offseason has already gotten off to a uh, very, very fast start. Mm -hmm. We've already seen the Philadelphia Flyers, Columbus Columbus Blue Jackets make a few trades already. Daniel Briere is just – he seems comfortable in his new role as GM there in in Philadelphia. But some new roles as well across the league management-wise. Obviously, the yep. Toronto Maple Leafs had to hire a new GM of, the, of for themselves, mm-hmm. as well as the Pittsburgh Penguins hiring mm. Kyle Dubas as president of hockey operations, and then most recently hiring Jason Spezza as assistant general manager for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Let's start there. We will get to the Let's. Toronto Maple Leafs and that management as well. But just mm. what a – like. What a way to walk back on your words, eh? Like, it just hey, immediately look, turns around and a complete 180. You knew that that was not real-ish, what he was saying that day. He was obviously emotional. I believed it. I believed He's just, it. you know what's the old, any, I guess I understand where you're coming from, but knowing that how much of a hot commodity GMs are in this league, and I know things have not exactly gone to plan for Kyle Dubas with the Toronto Maple Leafs. That, that like this isn't rocket science, but he is a very respected young yeah. GM. He took the reins very early on in his career, and in a pressure cooker situation. So say what you will about the outcomes for Kyle Dubas. At the end of the day, he's really earned my respect because I couldn't imagine. Oh, yeah. Being what, what did he take over at 30, uh, 27 or eight? Like, I can't even he remember. Was, yeah, he was 28 or 29, I believe he was. I couldn't even imagine. I can barely manage my own week to week budget, let alone an entire <laughs> organ. You know what I'm saying, Steele? Yeah. Like, everyone takes shots at these guys, and maybe you remember what is on the line for them day to day. And I'm not here to go down that path. So, what I will say is, Kyle Dubas was going somewhere. And the fact that he's going to the Pittsburgh Penguins is a little bit interesting. And actually, after Spezza immediately stepped down, you know he was going to be following Dubas anywhere he was going. 19 years in the NHL, Dubas plays zero. He needs someone close to him that understands those nuances of the game. This is another smart move by Dubas. Keep someone who is also steel. You and I can agree. Jason Spezza is one of those guys that you bow down to in the dressing room. He's an absolute legend. He's a leader and you do what he says. So that's an important piece. Before I throw it back to you, Pittsburgh has 20.2 million in cap space this off season. So he's going to be a busy boy, but I think I really like this move for the Pittsburgh Penguins who have what do, what have I said a hundred times, a small window for winning left. Maybe this is the last year with these core pieces. Yeah. Well, to start off with Jason Spatza, you couldn't describe it more perfectly than the phrase. Mm. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth. He he immediately resigns from his position from Toronto and follows Mm. Kyle Dubas over to Pittsburgh. So right. I completely agree with that. All, all respect towards Kyle Dubas. I love Kyle Dubas. I think I'm still a little bit hurt with the way that he left because I wanted him to stay so, so bad. I thought he's done a phenomenal job so far. So okay. I think I'm still a little bit hurt with his decision to leave and the way he left after saying it's Toronto or nothing. And then a week later, he shows up in Pittsburgh. All right. I get it, though. When you get offered uh, that size of a contract at that length, probably taking that offer as well. But, mm. again, respect due to Kyle Dubas and Jason Spezza. They are phenomenal for any mm-hmm any organization and they're lucky Pittsburgh is lucky to have the two of them. And again, like you said, after, after meeting with Mike Sullivan and Sidney Crosby, if you have Mike Sullivan and Sidney Crosby, you are a cup contending team. So I think they do have a few things to look at Good this point. off season Good roster point. wise. 
Chris and Jari, uh, obviously, Nathan, number one. Chris and Jari, number one. I think they also need to take a look at trying to, again, the same sort of fashion that we were saying for the uh, New York Rangers, maybe, or not the New York Rangers, um, the New York Islanders, about getting some more speed and some more youth it, it, throughout the roster. That's something they got to look into as well because mm-hmm. um, they have a lot of older guys. Jeff Carter, yep. Mikhail Granlin, Jason Zucker, Nick Bonino. There's a lot of guys that are on the older side for the Pittsburgh Penguins, so that's something that maybe Kyle yeah. Davis and Jacob Betson need to look into as well. Benino UFA, Zucker UFA, Heinen UFA, Josh Archibald UFA as well. They want no. Zucker back though, and he's going to get. I a would want contract. Zucker back as well, but he's also earned a pretty good payday. He's a very yeah. good also steal playing left and right wing. Some some leagues you get him at center too. Actually, no, left and right wing. But anyway, he's been a very valuable fantasy piece as well, and just really chipped in nicely for the Pittsburgh Penguins. But it's interesting how these things work, right, Steel? Toronto lets him go. They go with a more quote unquote experienced guy with Bradshaw living. But really, you know, we're talking about the on ice situations that both Dubas and Spets are going to have to work with. Mm-hmm. And it's not pretty in Pittsburgh, but it's not exactly pretty in Toronto either, especially on the goaltending side of things. And true living is going to have to make a bunch of decisions here. And maybe if you're okay with it, we like don't add. That's huge, smart. We like it for the Matthews angle. But what is he going to do with Sheldon Keith? Sheldon Keith? What I does Shirley Living he... do? I wanted to ask you about that because, in my opinion, I want him to stay. I want him to stay. Yeah. And I think he's earned that right. Maybe on a very short leash, but I want him to stay. I don't think Tree Living, you know, there's only so many bold moves he can make. And I really do think he has to focus with that big four. So I think he leaves Keith in there. I think he leaves Keith as well for at least the first half of the season. You got to get a sense of how they work and you can only mm-hmm. do so much in the off season, you know, right. uh, within meetings, within having conversations with all the players, all the coaches. Again, that's what Brad Tree Living has been doing since he's arrived in Toronto is forming those relationships with the players, with the coaching staff mm-hmm. and get a sense of where this team is at right now before he makes those major moves. Which I would, in the same boat, like, again, this is a veteran general manager throughout the league, but it's with a new organization now. He's not familiar with these coach, with these coaches and with these players yet. And that's something he has to do by forming those type of relationships. So it's not all business right off the start. I think he has to play a little bit into uh, mm. the cards that he's been dealt so far. He's yep. coming into Toronto, a very high uh, media organization where he knows that he's going to be uh, the media is going to be all over him for anything that he does right now. For so sure. he's taking it a little bit slow this offseason, get familiar with the new organization. I want Sheldon Keefe back as well. I think, Me too. And if anything, I, I think uh, with Kyle Dubas over the last few years, I thought Keldon Sheep has done a really good job at, 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 you know, changing game plans, changing the flow of games and switching uh, styles throughout games as well to figure it out. I think he gets at least half the season if it gets mm. rocky towards then, maybe uh, Treliving makes a coaching change and a coaching decision. But I, again, the top priority is Austin Matthews, and that's exactly mm. why they bring in mm-hmm. Shane Doan, in my opinion. And there is a lot of UFA bodies. He's going to be a busy boy very soon, even if he doesn't want to be. Noel Achari, UFA. Aston Reese, UFA. Michael Bunting, David Kampf, Alex Kerfoot, Ryan O'Reilly, Wayne Simmons, Eric Gustafson, Justin Hall, and Luke Shen. Ilya Samsonov, RFA. Obviously, a lot of those players will not be back in Toronto uniforms, but a bunch of them, I hope, are, and it's going to be an interesting offseason steal, one in which you and I will be here for all summer long. Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the morning. Of course, all summer long, we've got all the hot, hot content for you out there. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Like I said, Monday through Friday is when you can find all of our episodes, 7 o'clock in the morning. And thank you so much for making the Locked On Fantasy Hockey Podcast your first listen every single day. Have a great day, a great weekend, and we shall see you back here again on Monday. Peace.
Buying tickets to see your favorite NHL team shouldn't be stressful. That's where Game Time comes in. Game Time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. Get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds, two taps, and you're set. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, redeem code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to this Locked On podcast ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today.